Hey everyone, welcome to Carrie's Garage, and on this episode we're going to check out another one of my motorcycles. This particular motorcycle is still a bit of a project, I need to order some parts for it. Mostly a set of pistons, because the pistons were really messed up. I'll show you some pictures of how I got the bike, it had a locked up engine. I did get it free, but uh, the pistons and the rings just really weren't all that great. But overall, this is kind of an interesting and unique motorcycle. We'll go into a little bit of uh, what it is. I'll post some pictures up of like uh, drawings or some uh, pictures of disassembled engines so you can see what it's like because it's a little interesting. So this is my 1968 Pook 250 SGS. In America, this was sold by Sears and Roebuck as the Allstate SR250, what they referred to here as the Twingle. The engine is uh, rather interesting. It's what they refer to as a split single or two piston single cylinder so what it is is it has two pistons that are connected to one conrod that shared the same compression cylinder space basically up like i say i'll post up a couple of pictures of what it looks like and you have to remember this motorcycle came out this design came out in the 40s when two-stroke technology really hadn't been perfected as we know it today so they found something that would work and uh, they went with that. In the back of the seat here, original Denfield seat says Sears. And even on the headstock, it says uh, Steyr Pook made for Sears and Roebuck. I do have the rear tail light. I just need to uh, put it on. I haven't gotten around to mounting it. It has a really interesting design for the frame, really. The whole frame is kind of all pressed together. It's not like a tubular frame like we know it today. Engine. Carburetor's down here around the side. This is the choke plate. I don't have it permanently mounted. It's just kind of sitting there for aesthetics right now. One of the interesting things about this bike is... It has only 246 original miles. From what I understand, it was bought new in 68, ridden for a short period of time, parked, and then wasn't touched again for a long time until I got it several years ago. This compartment right here, let me open it up real quick. Is the tool storage, just kind of general storage. The really neat thing about this is I have the entire toolkit. It's complete. On the tank here, we've got two fillers. One's for gas and one's for oil. Now, like I said before, with two-stroke technology, we didn't have all the fancy pre-mixed fuels and everything like that. So you'd have gas in one, and then I forget what grade oil you'd put in this side. This side? Yes, yeah, this side. Uh, you put a heavy grade oil and what it would do is there's an oil line which is right there and would actually inject into the bottom of the crankcase so it would kind of premix the oil with the gasoline. I, I do apologize a bit. The birds are a bit active today so we've got some guests in the background making quite a bit of noise. Overall, I really love the way this bike looks. The twin tailpipes the chain case is completely enclosed. It's just a very unique European design. And for everyone who doesn't know, Steyr Pook, it's actually an Austrian company. So this motorcycle was built in Austria. And on the tank right here, originally, it would say Pook if it was an Aust Austrian, European delivery kind of a bike. But here, I've got the badges. There's somewhere in a box that say Allstate. Overall, it's in really good condition for what it is and for having been sitting for such a long time. The parts aren't that hard to find. I did find a supplier out in Austria that I could get a brand new set of pistons with rings, the hoses, control cables, and whatnot. There's a company here in America that sells them as well but I kind of was able to find a little bit of a better deal over in Austria. Problem there being though is shipping's a little expensive and trying to, you know, get a hold of them. 
But at some point here in the near future, I'm gonna get all the parts so I can get this bike running so I can be able to ride around, enjoy it, have some fun. Then I can do a really good video of riding it and when it gets running. And even though it doesn't run, like I said, I was able to free up the engine and it does. It does kick over. It does have a little bit of compression, but when I had it all apart to free it, the rings really didn't look all that great. And I had to kind of hit the tops of the pistons a bit to be able to slowly work them free. So they did get a little bit of damage, but that's why I need to do the pistons on it. But really it's not too bad. I was just glad I was able to get the engine freed up and that I'm probably not gonna need to take the bottom end apart, just do the pistons and clean it up a little bit with new seals. Then it should run perfectly fine. And then what I'll do is bring the seat over to a upholstery shop here in town that I know. Should be fairly simple, just have them redo it. I doubt I'll have the sears on the back, probably just have that with all new material and not say sears. Kind of just want to put pook stuff on it, make it look more like a pook instead of an all-state bike. And kind of cool on the Kickstarter, it's just pook right there. So overall, just kind of an interesting, unique little motorcycle. They're not very powerful. I think these 250s had like 16 horsepower. Not all that particularly fast, but from what I've heard of people that have had these, they say they're just kind of fun little bop around motorcycles or cruise around on, which is pretty much all I want. I've had fast motorcycles and eh, overall, I just kind of like to putt about, have a good time, not go too fast. And kind of like on my BSA, it has this adjustable knob, but this is a little bit different than the BSA. The BSA has the girder fork where you could adjust the dampening of the, the, the shock, basically. This one right here, all this does is just adjust and uh, tighten or loosen the headstock. So if it's a little bit loose while you're riding, you can just tighten it up a little bit, or if it's a little too tight, you can just loosen it. My old BMW I had had that. And also something that's similar, like with an old uh, BMW Airhead, is this key. You push it in, click to turn it on, and then this is also the light switch. And right there you can see Steyr Daimler Pook of Austria. When I get all the new engine parts to get it together, I'll take it apart a bit and I'll buff out the paint. Should come out pretty good and look fairly nice for what I want. I'm not gonna do any sort of restoration on it. I'm just gonna get it mechanically running, clean it up, polish it, and then just really enjoy it. Well, that'll do it for this video. It's kind of a quick one, can't take it for a ride, but I figure you guys would like to check this particular motorcycle out because like I said, it's really rather interesting. Thanks so much for watching, really appreciate it. Leave any comments, questions down below, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I'm trying to build up the channel and we're doing pretty good right now. I really appreciate it and thanks so much. See you guys next time.